good morning good afternoon and good evening everyone to the channel it simplified i hope you're finding these videos useful and subscribing to the channel in today's session i'm here to talk about uh, net backup version 8.2 and azure blob storage and how they complement each other before i do that uh, just an idea about the environment i have an on-prem server with the name itsnbu it is acting as a master and media server and it is attached to a das or directly attached storage and on the Azure side, I have a storage account. It's a blob storage account with the name ITS Cloud Storage Offline. And in that, I have a couple of containers. I have container one, container two, container three. Now the question arises, why you want to have this kind of uh, architecture? Now, before the adoption of uh, cloud storage, uh, the only other option in case you want to create an offline storage was that uh, you might want to have a tape library in your environment and that will be vaulted and uh, uh, that will be used as an offline storage. So in case something happened to your on-prem data, right, you can rely on this uh, offline storage. And uh, because uh, cloud storage gives you this ability of elasticity and scalability, uh, this option i think makes sense because the net backup being one of the top uh, or the top most uh, uh, solution from the enterprise perspective to protect your environment it makes sense to give customers an option to integrate maybe with the cloud storage and we'll see in the steps that now i'm going to show you so that's one reason another uh, important scenario that i see is that uh, in the last couple of years there's been a lot of uh, 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 ransomware attacks uh, on customers. So that's why we always say that uh, we should always have a three to one topology, which includes three copies of data on two different media with one copy off site. And one copy we are talking about is in the cloud in this case. So you can have on two different media, and uh, in case you know that uh, ransomware. Uh, people they're able to get into your domain or you can access and can breach the security, you still have that one copy and then you'll be able to restore from that. So uh, most of the customers, they create a copy and then they create a duplicate in the cloud. And that is what we will see the steps involved, how to integrate to both net backup as well as uh, Azure blob storage. But that's what uh, customers they are looking forward to in terms of solution. So let me show you. On the Azure side, I've already created a storage with the name OITS Cloud Storage Offline. And in this, I have a couple of containers. I have container one, two, and three. We will be using at least uh, uh, one or a couple of them in our demonstration. So with that in place, I have this uh, Net Backup server. It is acting as a master and media server. And to configure uh, cloud storage with your uh, net backup master media server is the first step you need to do from your console you'll go to configure cloud storage server go next and uh, you see I have not seen that big of a list with any vendors you can see uh, with how many cloud vendors it is comparable with now in our case we are talking about uh, uh, Microsoft Azure so let me just scroll down Highlight it, go to next, and the service host is Blob Core. So you can leave that to the default uh, storage server name. I will leave that to the default too. This is my uh, master media server. If you have multiple media server in the environment, you can specify which one you want to use with the cloud storage. And then it is asking you to use the storage account. By the way, if you have Cloud Catalyst already there, which is another robust solution in case we're talking about terabytes and petabytes of data to move from on-prem to the cloud that's i think it's an it's a neat solution which i'm not going to get into right now but uh, something to consider so it is asking for the storage account and the access key which we'll get from the azure site so let me flip over and then the settings if i go to access key this is the storage account name i need to get and put that information here and the access key I can use any of the key. You can use either key one and key two. Uh, it generates for you two keys, so I can use either of them. So let me go and uh, put that information here. Go to next. 
And here you can specify what access tier you want. Do you want to use it with hot or cool, or you can use it with archive. Net backup is compatible with all the access tiers, so I'll leave that to the default. And here you can specify that you want to compress the data or you want to encrypt the data or not. Uh, something important to keep in mind, uh, in case you don't specify a way, there is no way that you can come back and uh, specify compression or encryption. But to keep this uh, demo simple, I will just specify compress because if you want to encrypt it, we open an, another wizard uh, for KMS or key management services, which is actually part of the net backup and you don't need any specific uh, licensing for that. So we get the uh, pre-summary of the selection, the storage server name, media server, name of the storage account, compression is enabled. We have not encrypt, uh, enabled the encryption, so that's why it's saying no. Size of the object and the storage server type and the access tier in our case, we are using the default, which is hot and cool tier. So it is creating the storage server, the name my Azure. So let's wait for a second. Go to next. At this stage, it is asking me to close the wizard and create the disk pool. So which I'll go and click on next. It automatically opens the disk pool. So as I showed you that I have three containers. So for this demonstration, I will use uh, only container one and I can always add the volume. I'll go to next. You need to give the name for the disk pool. And you can limit the IO streams. Again, I'll take all these default, go to next, and it is creating the network backup disk pool. It says it was created, and the third step is to create the storage unit, which is automatically checkmarked. And it is asking me for the name for the storage unit. So I'll name it Cloud Offline Storage. storage unit actually and in case uh, you have multiple media server you can specify in our case we only have one and click on next and click on finish and that's it that is how you can integrate your uh, uh, net backups version 8.2 with Azure storage and uh, if I go to the storage and go to the storage unit you will see that uh, my cloud storage, which is I will be using as an offline copy, has appeared over here. With this, we have successfully configured NetBackup 8.2 with Azure Blob Storage. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.